Hey YouTube, Cam here. Wanted to bring you another video. Uh, this is not uh, a new idea by any means. Uh, this is something akin to what you've seen Christo do and Coach Rob do uh, in in their kind of you know hype buster, believe the hype, you know videos. I think Christo, Crystal's done one hype buster so far, and um, I think they're I, I think they're really a really good idea actually. And so I'm going to kind of share my thoughts. I've got 15. Uh, either really hyped or really loved uh, fragrances from the community here. And uh, I'm going to share my thoughts on them, let you know what I think. And uh, I don't love them all. And, and so, you know, let's get into it. And, uh, and, and I'll just share my thoughts on these and, and wrap up with, with you know, something that I hope you take away from this video. I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, this guy right here. Very beloved, extremely hyped. This is Tobacco Benin. I got this uh, 30 mil decant from... Uh, Dan the man. Dan, you are the man. Thank you very much for splitting this. This is good stuff. Uh, so Tobacco Vini, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with, with the community on this one. Really nice stuff. Uh, so that's, that's scent number one. Next one up, I'm going to go ahead and grab this guy right here. Rose 31. This is one that a lot of people really like. Um, and when I tested it, in Vegas, uh, you know, I didn't dislike it by any means. If I, if I hated it, I, I probably wouldn't have bought it. So, but uh, I tell you what, I, I'm not a fan of this fragrance. Uh, it's too bitter for me. I'm not a fan of bitter fragrances generally. And uh, so, uh, you know, for Rose 31, yeah, not not my cup of tea. And um, I, I do wear it sometimes, but usually over New York Amber. When I put the two together, it's it's a good combination, and I enjoy wearing the both of them together. But on its own, Rose 31, not a fan. See up next, got uh, this guy right here. Going to the designer side of things. So, uh, Terre de Hermes n needs no introduction. Uh, smells like earth. Uh, it's a, it's a vetivery uh, kind of fresh fragrance. Maybe you know heard it referred to as a as a dirty orange. Uh, this is good stuff. This yeah, I like this stuff. This is definitely good stuff. Um, so I I am also in agreement with the community on this. Next up, let's go. Uh, let's go designer again. La Nuit de Lum. You don't hear many people say bad things about La Nuit de Lum. Uh, when I first smelled this on paper, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. On paper, this was gorgeous. Um, I picked up a bottle, um, and I've worn it a number of times, and uh, I don't love it. It's okay. Don't love it. Don't hate it. It's all right. So La Nuit de Lum. I'm not one of the lovers of this bad boy. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, that's that's my thoughts on Lenoui de Lum. Let's see, let's go, uh, let's go niche again. This guy, once again, none of these need an introduction by any means. This is Musk Ravishore, Frederick Mall, and this has got a ton, ton of hype. The, when, when my wife and I went to Vegas, uh, it was probably two or three years ago, this was one that I, I almost felt like I just flat out needed to buy as long as I didn't hate it. Um, and absolutely ended up picking it up uh, along with Carnal Flower. And um, you know what? I I do like this stuff. This is nice stuff. But Christo, uh, on on one of his uh, on a hype buster video that he did, uh, let let the community know that he does not like this stuff. So keep that in mind. Just because I like this and it seems like the community generally likes this, does not mean you're going to like it. Not everybody likes this scent. Uh, but I'm in agreement with the community on this. This is nice stuff. Sometimes I like it more than others, but Musk Ravageur, good stuff. I think, uh, just one more comment on this. I think it's amazing as I look at the notes um, on Fragrantica, and I may be wrong, but I don't remember seeing an actual Musk note. Now, that doesn't mean Fragrantica knows everything that's in here, but in the end, what I find uh, amazing about this fragrance is that Maurice Roussel took a whole bunch of notes and combined them together into something that smells musky. I mean, this this is exactly what I would think musk would smell like right here, but it's a whole bunch of notes that have been put together that smell like musk. That is awesome. Well done, Maurice. Uh, musk Ravageur. Next up, go back to the designers. Okay, here you go. Um, Dior Homme. I'm sure this is reformulated, so you know I don't want to you know, see too many comments below. Oh, but but that's the reform, you know reformulated. You would love the original. I'm not a big fan of this scent. Um, I, the, the powderiness of it, um, there, there's, there's something a little funky in there that's almost a little too, 
baby with a with a you know kind of a, a, a maybe a little bit of a dirty diaper type of powdery baby powder so I don't know I don't know how to explain it you guys there's something in here that's just a little off to me in the powderiness and what I get from this scent don't love it um, I'm not saying it's a bad scent by any means but I'm just not a big fan of this stuff and um, I'm, I'm probably in the minority in the community on that then uh, we'll go to uh, we'll go to its darker counterpart right here uh, Durham Intense this is also reformulated and this is nice stuff and actually my wife pulls this off quite well also and um, you know for those of you who are wondering whether or not to pull the trigger and get the reformulated version of this uh, I say do it uh, you know some people in the community are gonna tell you oh they've taken out the cocoa and they've put in a a pear liqueur and and yada yada you know what it still smells like cocoa okay you still get a cocoa vibe in this I don't smell um, a, a, like a, a fruity pear-y whatever it's cocoa um, when they reformulate something like this, I'm sure they're not trying to change the fragrance. They're just trying to uh, come up with something that smells similar and, and doesn't cost them as much to make. So uh, Dior Intense reformulated. This is nice stuff. Uh, would I pay 150, 200, 250 for this? Probably not. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just saying that. It's nice. I like it. Um, but to me, it's not something I'd, I'd drop a ton of money on. Okay. Up next, we're going to go... We're going to go niche again. Boom. Shergi. Once again, uh, very loved fragrance. Uh, and you know, this is good stuff. Shergi is nice. I'm absolutely in agreement with the community on this one. Uh, hay sugar. Mm, that boy, that talk about a, a unique way to sweeten something. Uh, well done. You know, House of Serge Luton. Shergi, nice stuff. Let's see, next we're going to go niche again. Uh, going to go Royal Oud. Anybody who's seen my review on this knows that I really enjoy this stuff. Um, would I pay 320 something bucks for it? I don't know that I would, but I picked this up off of uh, Fragrance Net for uh, about 160 and it is well worth it. This is beautiful stuff. Uh, so, you know, for those of you who haven't sniffed this out, well worth your time, sniff it out. That doesn't mean you'll like it once again. Okay. Let's go back to designer side. Fahrenheit, classic. Uh, think pretty well res respected, uh, loved in the community, uh, and, and even those who don't love it, I would imagine there's still some respect for it uh, because it's so unique. Uh, it's it's just amazing what perfumers can do in taking notes and creating a, an accord that is like really how how did, how did they do that? And that petroleum note that you that you, or that petroleum accord that you get in here. Um, is is awesome and I, I really think that it's 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 the uh, violet leaves mixing with the leather and, and giving you just kind of a like I said a petroleum feel to me this is kind of kind of gas and grass that smell uh, like you just cut the lawn and so you've got the smell of, of fresh cut grass on your clothes but you've also got the smell of exhaust from the lawnmower on your clothes as well Fahrenheit nice stuff uh, let's see let's go ahead and go with another designer this guy right here uh, M7 I blind bought this bad boy. Uh, this is this stuff is you know, I'm not gonna say hard to find, but you're probably not gonna find it in many retail stores to be able to actually sample it and sniff it. And after reading the comments, you know, on Fragrantic under this thing, it just sounded amazing. And so I pulled the trigger and I bought this. I probably spent 110 bucks buying this from I think FragranceX.com. And uh, you know what? I don't I don't like it. I, I really don't like it. I'm not a big fan. Um, that's that's just how I feel about it. Uh, you know, Yves Saint Laurent, they definitely went out on a limb and they made something that was unique and something that was, uh, you know, a little daring and something that's not like all of the other designers that you smell out there. And, uh, you know, that that's great. You know, that's, that's great that they're willing to do that. Um, but I don't like this stuff. I'm not a big fan. And um, so, yeah, there, there's my take on M7. Next... Go ahead and go with this bad boy right here, Tonka Imperial. This is nice stuff. Uh, my wife and I recently took a trip to Vegas. We ended up picking up a bottle of this while we were there. We tested this, uh, Spiritus du Blue Knee, uh, Gourmand Coquin. We, we tested an, um, some of the some of the gourmands that are offered by uh, by Guerlain, and, and uh, I tell you what, they they do gourmand well. Tonka Imperial. This is nice stuff. Um, almondy, vanilla y uh, you know, maybe even a little incense, you know, if you, if you get in there and, and, and sniff and, and look for it. Uh, nice stuff. In fact, I'm wearing this today, scent of the day. But, once again, even though 
Uh, the community seems to generally love this stuff and uh, you know, pretty hyped. Uh, you know, the Fragrance Bros tried it and they weren't super impressed. I mean, it doesn't mean they didn't like it, but, you know, they weren't blown away by it. And uh, so keep that in mind, you guys. Even even though I'm coming on here and I'm saying, yes, this is good stuff. Yes, I like this. Not everybody is going to love it. So there you go. Tonka Imperial. Ah, uh, We're going to go, actually, the last three are designers. So let's go ahead and just get through them. This guy right here, Chanel Platinum Egoist. This is nice stuff. This is a green, kind of soapy fragrance, um, and uh, it, well, great performance. Yes, good stuff. And, uh, you know, you're going to get your money's worth with this. Um, but once again, just because I'm in agreement with the community does not mean everybody's going to love this stuff. But, yes, this is one that I am in agreement. This is nice. Ah, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and second to last, Lode Issei classic um, and uh, uh, a unique fresh scent unique because even though it's got a lot of freshness in there with the yuzu the really really bitter citrus opening that actually lasts quite a long time you get that bitter citrus for a while um, it's also got a lot of backbone too which I think increases the versatility of it um, you know you get some cinnamon you get some woods there's a lot more going on in this than just fresh so even though it says low water um, this is not your typical aquatic by any means, and uh, you can probably get away with this in more than just the summer. Uh, overall, uh, it, it's it's not bad. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Um, I think uh, the biggest problem that I have with it is that 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 yuzu that's it's really you know sour, and you know I, I tend to to lean more towards generally um, you know sweet fragrances, and uh, and with this one being as sour as it is, uh, I don't love it, but I don't hate it. This is not bad stuff. Uh, Lode Ise. And last but not least, cannot do uh, a, a hyped slash loved video uh, without talking about this guy right here. This is uh, Pure Malt from uh, Terry Mugle. And, um, you know, I, I, I did not pick this up online when it was discontinued for 200 250 bucks. I didn't do anything like that. Uh, you know, they, Terry Mugle started selling it again on their website. You know, I went and grabbed the bottle for probably 80 something bucks. Uh, and um, I'm glad because I, I don't love it. I, I really don't. Um, and I would not pay discontinued eBay prices for this by any means. Um, I just I just don't love it. It's just not my cup of tea. It's it's not it's not my favorite thing by any means. And uh, so yeah, you know those uh, there's my thoughts there. And and I know that you know a lot of you are probably going to be shocked that somebody in the fragrance community is actually saying that they don't like pure malt. And I'm not saying that it's it's bad and that I hate it. I just I just don't love it. You know, I it's not something that I I like a great deal, and it's not something that I wear very often. So you know, there you go, you guys. And you know, before you start clicking those thumbs down buttons and you know giving me a whole bunch of thumbs downs and negative comments because I, I said something uh, you know bad about a fragrance that you love, I, I I hope what you take away from this video is that no matter how loved or how hyped a fragrance is there is no fragrance out there that everybody loves there's not a single one for those of you who've been watching cody's videos um Drac Doc, cody does a great job when he does a review taking that fragrance down to times square letting a hundred people smell it and letting us know what they think of it and i promise you there is not a single fragrance he's going to be able to take down there that all 100 people love and so keep that in mind um i think i think the, the biggest caveat here is is you know as it as it pertains to blind buying a fragrance uh, because you know when you blind buy a fragrance you end up with something like this which a lot of you love but I don't and I spent a hundred and ten dollars on it um, and you know that's that's my fault uh, for pulling the trigger and, and spending that kind of money on something I'd never smelled before but that's just the risk you run uh, when you blind buy something so no matter what the community is saying uh, about something, just know that if you haven't sampled it yourself, if you haven't smelled it yourself, you're running the risk of spending your money on something that you don't like. And just bear in mind that no matter how, once again, no matter how loved a fragrance is, it is not loved by a hundred percent of people. So um, I, I hope this was helpful. Like I said, you know, kind of take take the video for what it is before you start throwing in the thumbs downs and the negative comments and whatnot. And you know what? Let me know your thoughts on some of these fragrances. If, if there are some of these fragrances that you also aren't a huge fan of, 
let me know. I'd love to hear it. Uh, but thanks for tuning in.